talk tonight is on another type of coin and what we're used to. They're called geocoins. Uh, you and the club back in a whole five or six range, <coughs> I had a talk on these uh, with another gentleman. Uh, it's Kevin John. And it was right after our 2000 meeting because uh, I ended up getting in the 2000 meeting. So it was uh, Okay, so we've got geocoins and it's November 11th, or 10th, and go right to, okay. Here's my agenda. Geocaching overview, a major grouping of geocoin styles, favorite coins from within the groupings, and typical geocaching webpage, if I can get it up with all of the uh, technology going on, and a, uh, touch and hold some geo points that brought uh, my collection in so we can pass those around uh, later on. This is a, like a geocaching handheld GPS point. It's on the other side. This is what you typically use to uh, define the geocaches. So, the introduction, geocaching definition, using billion dollar satellites to find Tupperware in the woods. The other uh, uh, definition is using a handheld GPS to guide to a uh, published high at a given coordinates. So you can get within about nine feet of it, and then you have to use what you call your geo senses to find it. You're looking for sticks that are all in a, a parallel because if they fall in nature, they wouldn't be parallel. Somebody use those to cover up something, stuff like that. So once you've got to find a few geocaches, you have what they call geo senses. Okay, I got. Major groupings of geocoins. There's nine that I, I picked out in my collection to group together. Benchmark coins, code coins, milestone coins, one that we will all like are money coins, organizational coins, personal coins, quest coins, tools, and then just a broad category that I call typical. Here's my, oh, here's uh, my benchmarking coins. The um, the one in the middle at the top is a friends that would fit two categories. That's a personal coin, and um, uh, it's got a benchmark on it. And we'll find out more about that later on in the talk. Um, up at the top, you'll see uh, two coins, both uh, obverse and reverse, and they're in Kitty Hawk. There were for the, uh, the Wright Brothers flight. Then, then we got another one down here, it's Paris. And then here's one Las Vegas and stuff. So they're all, all benchmarks. Before I started caching, I ended up looking for benchmarks and finding those. <coughs> they were on a Jeep website and uh, I was looking at Jeeps at the time and ended up uh, doing the benchmarking and then finally got into the caching. There's another group that I called coded coins. You can see that there's a spinner. This spinner here would go on to that by taking that thumb mute wheel off. And then right now, the, the jack of spades would be the O. So if you had a, a puzzle, you could uh, make the puzzles up for that. Uh, over here, the A is the K on this one. A is the J here. But that spins. So all you have to do is have somebody have this coin, and I could tell them that the uh, major key was M. And they take the tail of the, uh, the lizard, which is pointing to the A, and point it to the M, and then you'd we'll be able to do an easy C service shift cipher with that. Uh, 
Yes. And then down here, on this one, the, uh, the, the inner dial is called group, uh, glyphs. So uh, you, you got to have a special font for that, which is available. And you can uh, do the same thing with a uh, shift. The, the upper one is um, this one looks like a pocket watch. So then we go. Oh, touching the mouse. Uh, then we go into milestone groupings of geo coins. Uh, the top ones are all hides. There's a ten hide, a twenty five hide, and a fifty hide. Then the bottom ones are fines. And uh, you see that the fines are a lot larger than the hides. It's hard to hide something easy for you to go out and find it. I'm missing one of my first ones, my 100th one. My son uh, geocached with me, and when he got to 100, I gave him my, my coin and uh, cast that to him. Some of the, uh, the pins come along with them. These pins match those coins, and then you can actually get other types of pins, so they're, they're collectible as well. Now, money. This is uh, pretty good. They, they do the, um, I'll get out of the way so you can see, all right. And now I'm blocking people here. No, no problem. Put your hand in. Here, here's our one dollar bill. It's a pretty good representation of it. It's got its own number, so you can get to that on the web page. We'll see if we can get to that later on. Here's a two dollar bill, and here's a different metal two dollar bill. There are some ingots. You can buy the box up here and put, put the ingots in it, I guess. And then you got your two cents. So there, I've got four of them, and um, there's the number on those. It's the uh, common obverse on that. Then you get into the uh, euro ones, just uh, three different metals. I bought an extra one so I could display them uh, using the uh, uh, obverse and reverse so people could see it if I wanted to do a static display. Organization uh, Air Force. Another organization's Knights Templar. We got EMTs. We got the Rochester Museum and Science Center. Where's Scott Fibers? We got radio towers. <laughs> We've got 4-H. So uh, the RMSC and the 4-H, like I said, I bought two of each so I could display those. But uh, they just got different numbers of different points because each has its own independent page. You'll see more about the next template point in a minute. Now, personal. These are all from somebody. This Uncle Jack is out in California, and he hid one, and I, I grabbed it, and he told me just to take it and move it and, uh, and just keep it going. So uh, Captain John would get a talk with me. This is his personal rainbow point. And these are his gave me these as a gift for those, and then I, I purchased other benchmark. But he was the one that got me started collecting benchmark points. Okay, there are quests. There are quests that you can do. The, uh, the ones with the train on it as the third quest that went on, and the, the one with the cowboy hat on it is the, uh, the fourth quest. And uh, There'll be a lot more about that one coming up. But one close and near to, dear to us is the Seaway Trail mm -hmm. that starts up in upper New York State and it goes down through towards Ohio. And uh, uh, this one right here is the Rochester Lighthouse. By getting so many caches along that trail, I got that coin in that grouping. And the same with uh, Fort Ontario near Buffalo, Niagara Falls. Uh, I actually hid one on that uh, trail, and I, I hid it out by sodas. Uh, I don't think it's still active. I think the case got stolen. Then you got some other ones down here. 
and uh, they were just special smaller, smaller ones. You got tools. Uh, you'll see a quadrant here. You sight down over the top of it. There are two prongs there. This is obverse reverse. And uh, it'll tell you the, how high you are off of what star and you, you know your location. Just a, a different navigation tool. This is a uh, hemispheric one, so you can see where the constellations are. That's a very large point. It's probably about this big. And then uh, we got another uh, navigator here. And we got a compass down here. It's called an alien compass. You can see the world. I don't know if I can screen that. Well, not too well. It's hard. You can see the, uh, uh, the continents on that. And then uh, we got rod and staff and then the, uh, the triad for the uh, sexton. Now you got other typical ones, um, general, uh, Generic geocaching, geotoids. Um, uh, you got uh, geocaching police. Uh, you got another one in the uh, the Knights Templar group in there with uh, um, uh, the man that's out from Da Vinci. And there's three in that series. They, they fit in three different my categories. And you got another one called Geoslug. When they, they pick them up from one cache and put them into another, uh, sometimes they move slow, so they call them a slug. The top ones are a message in a bottle. The square ones are denoting the, uh, the original cache that was put out. It was put out in uh, out west in Oregon near uh, near the uh, Pacific Ocean, and um, uh, they put four items out in it, a can of beans, a couple other things, and then they put a, uh, a note on a web page and dare people to go out and find it. It was in a five-gallon bucket that was buried half in the ground, and uh, people went out and found it and said, this is a good idea, so that was a starting the geocache. Okay. Mike Luck always asked when somebody didn't talk, what's your favorite one? So this is uh, my contribution to uh, Mike's memory here. My favorite benchmarking point is uh, from Captain uh, uh, John and his first mate. And that's what got me started at benchmarking point. My favorite the coding is a pocket decoder because the inner spinners, I can do many different types of coding and decoding with that one. Milestones, my 50 uh, highs is, uh, is a favorite because even if somebody's found thousands of caches, they may never get up to high 50 different ones. So there's 50 caches around the Rochester area that uh, were attributed to the high in there. This is one that a lot of them will like. I took the uh, two years worth of state quarters and put a traveler on, on the group of each year. And I stamped, see on, on this one, there's a zero, there's a one year. I see what the number is there, but it, no, it must be a nine year. And then this one is the one and the two. So there's one through five here and uh, six through zero there. So by putting down states two letter uh, designations for the postal court, I could use those in place of numbers in summary to get the uh, coordinates that I wanted to go to that way. Here's one in the Knights Templar. You can see that, that this area here is very blurred and you can't see what it says. But if you hold it up to the mirror, it says, Follow the night's end. So that was uh, one of the clues for, for that, that quest. 
I like this one because uh, it was John's coin. He had bought it and he just gave it to me and said to, uh, to get as many miles on it as I could. Now this this was a uh, the fourth quest, so this was my my favorite coin of the quest. Uh, I was chosen to be one of the sixteen worldwide cashers to be an outlaw in this quest, and I finished fourth in the quest overall. The, the, being an outlaw didn't help you, you know, do anything, but you had to go through all the uh, steps of the quest. Now, I was the outlaw nicknamed Uncut Bill. Because of my mint heists and multiple uncut bills from the uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing. And uh, I had to interview for that, and they picked me, so must have thought the interview went well. And then my whole family was, was the gang. So my dad, uh, my youngest son, my oldest daughter, my uh, middle daughter, and uh, two, two grand grandkids. They all got one of the geo coins. Uh, my dad and I got, got one of the spinners. Is that in the hat? That's me. <laughs> That's uncut, Bill. <clears throat> this is my favorite group from the tools group. And a buddy gave this to me uh, when we went together and I did my uh, thousand five. Um, I called my wife after we did it and said, I'm okay. <laughs> I've repelled on a cliff to get this one. There's skinny atlas. And uh, it works like the, the, the sundial, but at night. Yeah. You look through the center, you can see the red star. And by moving the, the arms, you can tell what time it is. Oh, great. Okay. Now, this is a coin that I've got called the Phantom Logger. When I see some place, I can drop this coin there and then pick it back up. So this coin has traveled 473,000 miles with me to different caches, and that's like 19 times around the world. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to the web page here because of the way my computer is tied in with Zoom. I can't get outside of the area. So I, I'm sorry that I won't be able to show you that. But every coin has a, a six-digit code on it, and you can put that code in, and then it'll bring the page up, and you'll see all about the coin, what its uh, quest was, and everything. I, I'm going to end with a quote from Walt Disney that said, the way to get started is to quit talking and start doing. So we'll, we'll quit talking. And, to like it, go out and do it. So just a quick summary. I had a lot of fun combining different hobbies. In my case, I used coins, collecting backgrounds to build a stronger attraction to another hobby. I hope to have sparked some interest in some of you to either broaden your coin collecting background or to even broaden your hobby background to include other types of hobbies. Any questions? I'll see if I can answer. Chip, do you have your own cash coin when it's flipped? My own cash coin. The one that I leave? 43, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm at an estate sale. I see a box of coins. How would I identify a geo coin? Okay. What is there on that? Here's this right here, trackable at www.geocaching.com. And it'll give you that six digit code. See, it says trackable at, it's hard to see on the bottom there. But so this that's, is- That's always on- That's always on a geo coin. On a geo coin. Yeah. Okay, that's and that, what I wanted to know. And that code, code is on it as well. Okay. Marcus? Uh, yeah. Um, they made the coins and pins as one of the uh, sites to uh, get geo coins at, and there's another uh, geo coin site. Chip, could you repeat the questions when they're asked? 
Okay, the question was the one that commemorated the first geocache at that point is still available. And uh, at coins and pins, it may be. I have not been buying coins in a few years, so I don't, don't know for sure of that. Any other questions? Well, thank you all.